Alright folks, uh, welcome to another edition of Comic Fever. Uh, today is the reviews of the books. Um, I am a day late because it's November 1st. And I meant to do these uh, in time for you know the 31st so that it followed up. But as what happens, I always end up late. Um, this time it was kind of a, a mix up of things. Uh, my sister-in-law recently had a beautiful baby girl and uh, she is just so beautiful. So, without further ado, let us get right in to the books. Uh, first up on the list is called The Harbinger. Um, we follow a superpowered teenager by the name of Peter, who spends uh, most of his life just trying to get by while uh, he is being pursued by both the government and a secret organization uh, known as the Hamada Global Conglom Conglomerates uh, a group of super powered teenagers who are trying to learn how to not only use their own powers, but how to awaken powers within other people. Also, um, there are many twists and turns, um, one of which is uh, Peter try, uh, gets sick of the Institute and he tries to run away. Uh, one of the abilities that Peter in in this book has is he can read, uh, he has telepathy, and um, he is able to read the minds of all the students, and while maybe one or two were like, well, this is a cool guy, you know, maybe we should get to know him, stuff like that, uh, the rest are like, wow. Who the heck is this kid, you know? Is he really one of us? And... Uh, anyway, uh... Through that, he wants to leave the group. The group finds out about... Um, one of the kids helps him to escape, and... One of the higher-ups finds out about his escape. And, lo and behold, they kill his best friend, which turns out to be a big mistake on their part. Um, it was a good book. It was very powerful. It was very, like, power-driven. Um, it was brought to us by Valiant. Uh, the full name of the book would be Harbinger Omega Rising. And, uh... That's it for this one. Up next is Captain Marvel. We in these stories we follow the Avengers, uh, the adventures of uh, Carol Danvers. Um, this book was brought. First off, this book was brought to us by Marvel Comics. Um, it was done in 2014. And uh, it follows the adventures of um, Carol Danvers, 
Um, it's not... It is a typical superhero look. It is not comical, but yet it is not totally serious. I mean, she basically becomes a part of a group. Uh, she becomes part of the Avengers, and then she becomes part of uh, an offshoot group of superheroes who end up running into the Ga Guardians of the Galaxy, and they end up saving a planet. Um, it was a good book. Um, if you're into Captain Marvel, uh, yeah, if you're into Captain Marvel, uh, it's a great book. Um, I didn't particularly care for the um, mohawk that she sports, but then I realized she only really sports it when she has uh, her suit on, so I think it's more of a faux hawk than a mohawk. Um, I think it's just her long hair that just shoots straight up through this uh, hole in the top. Uh, anyway, good book and a nice read. If you're not looking for like uh, beat 'em up type stuff. Uh, next up is The Green Hornet, um, Volume 1, uh, going after a bad guy called The Voice, um, uh, it is basically about the uh, I would say the original Green Hornet, um, as is it, it seems it's about the father more than the son, and, uh, anyway, it follows the, um, adventures of Britt Reed and his psychic Kato, and they, uh, go after a guy named The Voice. Um, he is not your typical superhero in that he has a lot of dealings with the underground. And he, he presents himself as a bad guy while at the same time he is a vigilante of sorts. Um, Putting him in the proper places to um, know what's going on in the underworld. A uh, great story. Uh, great use of uh, you know, being that it's the theme of the ma of the masks. Uh, this was brought to us by Dynamite Entertainment. And, uh, it's a good read. Finally, last, but certainly not least, uh, we come to Orchid. Now, this is a different sort of book, because in this book, we are presented with a future that has been set up into two major classes, the rich and the poor. But in between the rich and the poor, there are just the middle ground. Um, and the middle ground aren't, aren't exactly like we would consider a middle class. Uh, they're still the poor people, but they're, they're the people that just really do not want to get involved in the war between um, the wealthy and the rebellion. Um, until one day, 
uh, most of the rebellion is captured and one of the rebellion um, I don't know if you'd call them henchmen or rebellion uh, partners or whatever but one of the rebellions ends up escaping and ends up running into the main character which is Orchid uh, and runs to her house getting the mother killed and Orchid and her brother uh, captured and while they are captured they make another escape which leads them into the wild where they run into an old woman who at first seems just a little eccentric but turns out that she was part of the original rebellion um, that happened a long time ago and she gives Orchid some strength, uh, but also while they're out, they accidentally they end up at, with the boy, her brother, dead, and that is when. Uh, the old woman gives a speech about how when you have nothing, you have the most to fight for. Um, because it is the wealthy that has made you lose all this. And with that speech, Orchid finally decides that um, uh, decides that she does need to get involved in this war. Um, that she can no longer be uh, a bystander. Uh, anyway. Brought to us by Dark Horse Books. Uh... And this concludes my look at the books from this month's Comic Bento Box. I'm sorry for the pauses. Uh, I was looking up something, but couldn't find it. Uh, but thank you. Subscribe and... Uh, I hope you see. I hope to see you and uh, see comments from you in future videos. Bye and thank you all.